Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you were to drop a 12 gauge shotgun shell hard enough on the ground that it set off the primer? Or maybe you had a hang fire where the primer doesn't immediately go off. You eject the shell, it lands on the ground and a couple seconds later it goes off. Or maybe you just had a really bad case of lack of judgment and you decided to hit that primer with a ball peen hammer. How deadly is a 12 gauge shell when it goes off outside the gun. We're gonna find out today. Now this video was originally filmed five years ago with our good friend, Danny, who passed away just over a year ago. And there's a very good chance you never seen this video, even though you were a subscriber at the time. The video was demonetized, meaning you probably didn't get in your subscriber feed. Uh, you couldn't search for it, and you certainly wouldn't just stumble on it. But I also feel I didn't do the best job I could have to edit the video and make it as interesting and fun as possible. In these tests, we used buckshot and slugs, and the results were interesting and quite surprising. All right, folks, here we are again. Danny with Jeff out here. Uh, most of you will remember this little uh, perimeter alert. Everybody asks what will happen if you use buckshot or slugs. So we're gonna demonstrate that for you today. For the first test, we'll be using this military grade nine pellet double lot buck 12 gauge shell. Nine pellets. There we go. Now, this is pretty interesting. We can see that the plastic shell balloons up quite a bit, and that's mostly just from the power of the primer itself. And it's not the buckshot that knocks the lens out, it's a jet of the plastic buffer inside the shell that initially knocks that lens out. Now we used a styrofoam head because I think most people, no matter where they are in the world, have a pretty good understanding of how tough or how weak styrofoam is. And out of those nine pellets, we had one that actually embedded itself in the surface of the styrofoam. Would it kill you? Probably not, but it would probably hurt. That thing really, really ripped it open. One, one of them hit him right here. Pop it out like a pimple. Yeah. I think he would have survived that. I mean... Yeah, it looks like most of the buckshot bounced off and uh, some, a couple of three of them was on the ground right here. Yeah. For the next test, we're going to try a 12-gauge foster slug. Maybe this will do more damage than that buckshot. That'll do. Is it all... It's all armed and ready to go, armed so we just got to go. set it in there. We're going to use uh, Greg's advice and double safety this with a thumb. Yeah. Load it. Because I, I trip over cables and stuff all the time, so... <laughs> Looks like the aim point is good. I think we're good to go right there. Ready to go. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, that one had a little more food. In our test with the foster slug, it turns out it was even more innocuous than the buckshot. And we would have done more damage had we just thrown the foster slug at the head. So just like with the buckshot, we have a lot of unburnt powder. So all the power that propelled that slug was just coming from the primer itself. So the shell needs to be confined inside a chamber where you can build up enough pressure to progressively get that powder to start burning. Well, I think I think he would have survived again. Yeah, he kind of caught it right in the nose, like right. It it there. literally bounced off his nose. Bounced off his nose. We found it about five feet over there. <laughs> no damage. We could reuse that. Them uh, high dollar glasses stay together. Yeah. Shell again, banana peeled. Banana peeled at the top where. The sun was hitting it directly and warming it up. A lot of unburnt powder. So. Yeah, it didn't even, didn't even open up the roll, roll crimp there. And I'm surprised the slug even went straight out. I know, I know. Yeah, Definitely all. wouldn't have killed you. No. Even yeah, hand lengths away, you know, it was, what, six inches away, maybe? Yeah, it's about eight. You want to, you want to volunteer to be shot in the face by Foster, no? a foster slug no. yeah no. I'll pass <laughs> no. I'll give you a face shield or something nope 
Still you, wouldn't try it, even though you know, I, I you, still wouldn't try it, even though you've, I've seen it. It'd be that one time it'd it, work right. Yeah, something weird happened, and yeah. It's like, nah. YouTubers killed doing stupid thing, you know? <laughs> You've seen that before, huh? Hey, well, what is that? Well, since we uh, tried the factory loaded stuff with factory powder, it doesn't seem well to burn the powder because there's no back pressure. So we're going to try one of these little stubbies. That is cute. It's got three buckshots in it, a uh, flex seal wadding, and 10 grains of Pyrodex. Black powder substitute. Oh, okay. FFFG. Okay, let's so it's see. Fa faster burning, so maybe we'll get some action out of this. That's the world's cutest, tiniest little shell I've ever seen. <laughs> I think that's smaller than the mini shell. I it think. is. Wow. Okay, let's give that a try. That's as short as I could get it and get everything in there. Okay, world's cutest shotgun shell. Whenever you're ready. There we go. <laughs> that's a flame edge. Now using the Pyrodex we had a little better combustion, a little more energy, and a little more damage. And despite that we still had a little bit of unburnt powder, believe it or not. Now I'm sure this would have hurt you, but it probably would not have killed you, unless it penetrated your eye or something. It's even cuter now, I couldn't think anything was possible. Look at that. Looked like it burnt the powder. I think that one did more damage than any of the others. Mm. Well, I think it might have one buried down in here. Oh, there, there it is. is. It would have put an eye out. Yeah. His glasses didn't protect him. It's yeah. amazing. That's real dirt there. Let me have a handful of that. The other day I heard this airplane flying around. You couldn't miss it. It was so loud. And much to my surprise, it was this 70% scale S-51, a Stewart 51 flying around. And this plane is powered by a supercharged big block Chevy. Now the plane had landed and I went down to the airport and um, over the fence I was checking them out with binoculars. They probably thought I was with the FAA or something like that. I looked kind of suspicious, but I was fascinated by this plane. I knew this plane existed and it was at our airport, but I never seen it fly before. Now, eventually the pilot wearing this orange jumpsuit, who I later found out was Elliot Seguin, who is a kind of a famous test pilot on YouTube. He came over along with his buddy and they talked to me and told me a little bit more about the plane. And they said they were going to fly it again in another hour after they ate some lunch. Now this gave me time to run home and get my camera, also my high-speed camera, so I could film maybe it flying over and get some neat shots. But the funny thing is, I had no idea he was a fellow YouTuber, and I want to support his channel. Fascinating stuff. You need to check him out. But he needs to post some new videos. Now the plane is called Bowers Pony, also known as hurry home honey. The engine develops 650 horsepower and the plane has an estimated top speed of 350 miles an hour. I got some decent high-speed camera footage of the plane. Uh, everything is manual on the camera. Focus, zoom, aperture, and exposure. So you kind of preset the camera where you think everything is right and you hope for the best. And I'm using full zoom on my 75 millimeter lens and trying to track this little plane that's going probably 200 miles an hour just on this landing approach. And as I mentioned, Elliot is a test pilot. He goes all over the place and he's kind of the guinea pig who test flies 
other people's airplanes to make sure they're safe. And there's been many times where the planes were not safe, and he discovered these bugs and somehow managed to bring the plane back in, sometimes in one piece. Now, if you have a problem driving a car and the engine stops, well, you can just pull over on the side of the road. It's a little different story when you're flying an airplane. Now, on the day I filmed this, I was supposed to be out filming a new video for my channel, but the person that was going to help me was sick, and we never got anything filmed. Anyway, I love airplanes. I thought you might be interested in this, and you might be interested in checking out Elliot's channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.